hit me. And welcome to Top Story for this Midweek Wednesday. We love Midweek Wednesdays. And we love it especially this morning because we're talking about something that I hadn't heard of previously and sounds like such an awesome idea because of where we live. I think Sault Ste. Marie in the area, of course, is one of the most amazing spots in the whole um, province as well as the whole country. Um, and some folks are joining me this morning that also think the exact same way. And they've, they've kind of taken a different perspective on it that we want to tell you about. Joining me this morning is Tracy Gage and Joni McGuffin. Ladies, good to see you. How are you? Hi, Luann. It's been a while. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. this snowy morning here Oh, my in gosh. Bouting here. Bouting, in the <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Bouting. Yes. Such a pretty name. Well, we it? were very fortunate because um, we have Tracy Gage from mm -hmm. Canmore, Alberta, from the Interpretive Guide Association, and um, myself from the Lake Superior Watershed Conservancy. And with the support of Tourism Northern Ontario, we were able to hold a whole day-long workshop prior to their tourism conference this week. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about bringing interp a, an interpretive guide program to the Lake Superior Watershed. So we organized a day. We had 17 people who came from around Lake Superior. And a very exciting way to bring... And that um, all took place yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Tracy, tell me about interpretive guide and guiding and what that means specifically. Um, it's just a way to uh, engage with your guests that you take out um, into the landscape. Um, our association is based out of Camera, Alberta. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we just train guides to make um, the information meaningful and relevant to the audience that they're uh, guiding. So, And I think that's such a, a key thing to focus on because, um, as Joni and I know, of course, Sault Ste. Marie, Lake Superior, we're such the, the, the beauty is enough in itself. But it would be so much more interesting, I would think, to have someone guiding. And, and in, in some of the workshops, that you tackled yesterday, Tracy. Um, one of the things that was uh, the focus is like heritage sites and making it important to people to understand why they're there. Yeah, it's one thing to go out and see it, mm -hmm. but it's another uh, thing when somebody makes it relevant to you and meaningful. Um, and you walk away with, you know, a broader idea of that place and a mm -hmm. connection to that place. So when you go home, you um, it sort of is carried with you instead of just seeing it for what it is. It makes them more personal. Makes oh, the way more personal. Yeah, yeah and that's important because people are yeah. looking for a personal connection. Yeah, especially when they come out and, and you know, spend a little bit of money. And a lot of this um, is is sort of um, a holiday that you, you take on your own, right? You're walking, you're, you're, you're biking, you're canoeing, you know, so this isn't something that you're going to a resort and sitting at the beach, no. right? No. So they want interactive. So we have a very unique landscape on this planet, mm -hmm. right in the heart of Turtle Island, the Lake Superior watershed. And it has an amazing ecosystem of stories that are historical, the indigenous stories, the geology stories. But all of those stories, um, in order to not be crass, but we need to monetize these incredible stories that we have. And we need to have professional guides in throughout this region that are paid well for their work. People will come from around the world to have experiences on the land and on the waters in winter, spring, summer, and mm -hmm. fall. And we also need to retain our youth. We need to engage all our elder knowledge from all nations. And there's amazing opportunities. An interpretive guide is someone who's trained in um, not only the, um, the knowledge base of a particular area of expertise, to share, but also the skills to be out on the land. Mm -hmm. So, and, right. and, and we see that as a huge opportunity to connect to our institutions, um, our universities and our colleges. And right here in Sault Ste. Marie with our amazing things going on with Chingwak Kinemagagamik, uh, the indigenous um, learning at Algoma University. Um, and, and even employment, you were saying that huge. one, of the, one jobs. of the big things. Jobs, 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 good jobs. Especially for young people, right? Good yes. summer seasonal jobs. Well, it's more than that. Yeah. It's year round, mm -hmm. well paying jobs. We need economic diversity in this city and in this region. And we have a gold that we just haven't mined. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yes, it's something that I think, you know, we're naturally gifted, but we don't even realize what that means on 
almost. Yeah. It's almost like we have to be tourists in our own city. Yeah. Do you find that as you as you travel through? Oh, I think Tracy can speak to being a tourist <laughs> in, our, <laughs> yeah. in our own cities. In our own cities. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's so important as well mm -hmm. because um, we look at the people that come from outside, but those of us who live in these amazing places often um, don't get connected to them. And part of the youth um, position is that if you you know, bring a place of life to life for mm -hmm. them and they feel that connection, it'll help them want to stay here. And a lot of times it does come down to jobs. And if you have a, a job that is a profession, um, and interpretive guiding is a profession, and a lot of people don't realize that, and um, that'll help you want to stay in those places that you were raised um, because the passion that you have for your place is what people are looking for. And they're looking for an authentic experience. And you know what? It shows, right? When it somebody shows. loves what they're doing and they love what they're showing to other people, Absolutely. you can tell because yeah. they're having a great time. That's the biggest part of it. You know, we have to have our own passion mm -hmm. um, in the place that we're taking people and uh, our own stories. And the stories really help connect. And so you need to, you know, be a part of the landscape in order to connect other people to and it. S and learn how to sell ourselves. Yes. <laughs> and be so boastful. And yes. There's, there's a way to learn this process mm -hmm. so that there is work for a lot of people in this. And it connects to our accommodations, all our food people, right. our yes. cultural people, our musicians, and our theater and Ripple our arts. Ripple effect's huge. It, it is huge. That is all part about the storytelling mm -hmm. of our landscape here. And, um, you know, just, just to come back to that connection to um, yesterday's um, interpretive guide workshop mm -hmm. that we held at the Canadian Bush Plain mm -hmm. Heritage Center. Isn't that a great is center? Such, we were in the center. midst right? of all the you know heritage yeah. um, 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 aircraft and we were doing this workshop and um, well just to give an example Sue Hamill has uh, seek adventures out of Thunder Bay. She's yes. doing historical walking tours of the city. Oh. They're very popular. She was running them all this last year. She came with Anna Parker and you know they talk about it she said half or more of the people coming were the local people who said this is amazing mm -hmm. we didn't know about this it, tourism begins at home and if we don't have pride of place and know who we are and where we come from especially especially in Baoting but mm -hmm. as some people say, this is the meeting place. At these rapids, we have got an incredible indigenous story that's been here thousands of years. People have traveled these waterways and these lands. And we, in the time of truth and reconciliation, this is part of reconciliation. So we're actually trying to get a project off the ground for next summer on this river. Uh, the ah. Conservancy is, and we have lots of partnerships set up between the Canal Park. Um, we're talking with Botswana First Nation, Whitefish Island, the Bush Plain Museum and uh, Shingwak Kinemagagamik and they have the Chief's Library that's being built. So in a replica birch bark canoe traveling the river in a three hour tour, the Conservancy is working on setting that's this so up. Awesome. So now people in are not just right. visitors, but city, but it's gonna be a paying opportunity that's gonna show people that these are, these interpretive guides who are gonna run this are gonna be, uh, they're gold for our region mm -hmm. and they're people, not infrastructure. They're people. And, and you know what? <laughs> Investing Tra in people. Right. And Tracy, <laughs> I think it's important to talk further about that because the, being an interpretive guide, um, I mean, anybody can learn the shtick, right? right. But if you, um, like I've, I'm not from Sault Ste. Marie originally. I'm from Espanola, just a couple hours east of here. Uh, but I've been here for 30 years. And I, when I'm talking to you, for instance, I realize how much I don't know about right. my own city, my own region where I raised my children, you know? So so it's really important, I think, the interpretive part of it and to really learn to sell ourselves. Yeah, you, you definitely have to have the knowledge of the area. So mm -hmm. that's that's a big part of that. And and right now we're looking for the experts in this area. So, you know, obviously the geology, the ecology, the management of the lands, mm -hmm. the cultural aspects, um, the histories, it's all really important. So having that basis of knowledge, of course, is going to be really important because you need to have that information but then you yourself also have to one of the biggest things I always said when I was hiring interpreters was the passion because um, without the passion you really don't have 
anything in terms of that connection. I think we've all been on a bad tour or oh, a bad gosh. <laughs> where we have right? somebody just talking at us the right. whole time and you know we're kind of nodding our heads and we're thinking in the back of our heads what I have to do tonight or mm -hmm. where else am I going to go today. I and need to get milk on my I own. Need, exactly. <laughs> right. so, so we walk away thinking oh that was a really neat place and mm -hmm. she was a nice person but we didn't really get much out of it right so so the key here is is finding those people that have the information, have the passion, and then know how to make the information fun. And make it relatable relevant, to relatable. themselves. Like, yes. you know what, I think it's so really important, important for, for people who are being guided to get to know the guide a little bit. And if oh, you're yeah. passionate, it's hard not to so get to know people someone. People want to be, one of the things I find as a guide, if you're good at it, people, they want to be your friend. They want to know about you. They want to come back. They send their they send their family, their friends. Right. Nowadays, they post it on social media. I mean, uh, s social media is relentless, right? So oh, you is. have to be good at what you do if you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. And and you definitely have to make it relevant to the people you're talking to because innately we only take in things that really are meaningful to us and relevant to us. And if we can't find a way to connect to it personally. Mm -hmm then we don't listen. Or if somebody is really excited about something that I might not necessarily know anything about, if I see the excitement, I want to know, why are you so excited? Exactly. What? what am I missing, right? Yeah. Yes. So that's all part, part of Absolutely. it, I imagine, as well. We have some pictures, Michael. I don't know if yeah. we've been running pictures. Oh, we have. Oh, Because, yeah, I've just been, I've been so vi <laughs> busy visiting that I'm just, I don't even know what's been going on. So thank you so much. Yeah, and you would, uh, you would call yesterday a huge success, I would imagine. I think it was. We had people from Houghton. We had uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. We had um, Marquette, Michigan. We had Thunder Bay, um, Beit de Gong, Nishnabeg, um, Wawa. Um, I just don't know if I've got all of the places. But it was amazing to have Tourism Northern Ontario support this workshop mm -hmm. so that we could bring people from around the basin. That's the, uh, the idea is to, to work at this regionally. So it's an right. international. Um, and Michael's uh, telling me we didn't yeah. actually show the pictures. That's okay. So we're going to show the pictures now. Oh, is all right. that okay? That'd be awesome. You can, yeah. tell, <laughs> you can tell us what we're looking at. As okay. an interpretive guide, uh, well, I, go. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> growing the network around the lake is not only, um, it's, it's an economic. It's social, mm -hmm. cultural, and environmental health and well-being of the people. Our conservancy is concerned with the health of the watershed. We're not going to get to that without the health of the communities. Right. And the health of the communities is, um, you know, diversifying our economy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we could move on to another photograph, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I just put some pictures in that uh, really um, speak to good interpretation. Interpretive. Yeah, yes. this is uh, this is one of our um, water, our Lake Spear watershed, the Francis Hilb. Um, Fen on Guli Bay, and you know, having a great interpreter like uh, uh, Sue Meads, a botanist, mm -hmm. teaching us about the plants in that that um, that area um, is 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 really awakening. And being and amongst and the plants, yeah, that's awesome. oh yeah, like there's you know over 200 plants there, and mm -hmm. she's identified. And uh, Cole uh, from the university, he's indigenous, giving us a talk there at the canal park, mm -hmm. uh, um, looking across to Whitefish Island, talking about the rapids that you could once hear from Bell Point saying to us, you only see 5% of the rapids today. And so he brings us back in this incredible indigenous history There's of the There's that region. heritage that yes. plays part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, oh yeah, here's Bonnie Kuchi from Biktagong Nishnabeg. Um, and uh, she's looking at the geology here, sharing it with people. And we're on a paddling tour. Um, there is such a rich geology story to tell around this basin. You know, we were uh, a continent almost split in half, right? Yes. through Lake Superior, mm -hmm. and we have a common glacial story, all these unique geology stories, but we were talking about that yesterday. Yeah, that's awesome. And of course, um, the elders and uh, Chief uh, Duncan Michano um, of Biktagong Nishnabeg, uh, Chief Pat Tanji at Mishpacot First Nation, mm -hmm. uh, Shirley Horn, the Chancellor of Algoma University, our chiefs right here, uh, like um, uh, Chief Dean Sayers, Batuana First yes. Nation. Uh, as the leaders of these communities, uh, the opportunities for youth in Indigenous um, communities to not only just learn traditions and learn about getting back out 
on the land. But if you want to put youth and elders together, if you want to put traditional skills back and learning languages, this interpretive guided job opportunity is a way that you can like, make money mm -hmm. at things, which is essentially, as Kevin Eshtawagan said to us yesterday from Indigenous Tourism Canada, it's really, people just around the world want to come and visit us. Here's, um, and uh, they just want to have tea with us and learn sure. about us. And uh, the Conservancy, one of our board members, and we worked on getting, we acquired this replica birch bark canoe. So a similar That's type awesome. canoe on the river. Uh, actually, Don Jackson's um, uh, international students in the summer, we went out to the pictographs. Oh, really? And to paddle out there and have this incredible tour, um, he does That's the, awesome. um, uh, he's, he's, uh, has been a lead person in the rec, uh, I should say, the, sh um, the chief's library mm -hmm. and the, the whole center of reconciliation around the residential school story. Um, so it's, it's really neat when we can make those connections with these stories and look at our past, but then go forward into our future where we can see um, in true indigenous um, reclaiming of economics based around this beautiful natural landscape mm -hmm. on which people and have lived for a long. And then offer a career long. for people. Absolutely, right? it has That's to great. turn into that. <laughs> yeah, we, you know what, like you said, we got to monetize yeah, it. We, absolutely. Yeah, we absolutely do in a really great way. So. Well, thank you both so much for coming in no. this morning. I really appreciate it. Nice to see thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. I hope we can get this program. Yeah. Right here. Well, we like already are actually. Yeah. We just yes. want to bring it Yeah, make down. sure everybody knows. The more yeah. people that know, the more they'll talk about it. Yeah. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. We'll be back with more top story right after this.